Rise fam. Happy Sunday. I hope you're having an amazing day and I hope you had a great weekend. Listen, I'm Pastor A. Super excited that you've tuned in for this weekend's virtual experience. I want to tell you first that I'm super excited for what is happening at Rise Church and I'm looking forward to seeing all the amazing things that God is doing. Now is a great time to be a part and join what God is doing here at Rise Church in Romulus. And I want you to join, right? I want you to be a part of the team. Uh, You may be wondering, how can I use my gifts? How can I get plugged in? Let me ask you one thing. Are you ready? Because if you're ready to use your gifts, we'll be getting ready to roll out next steps. But before we do that, go ahead and send me an email. Send us an email to connect at therisechurch.com. And I would love, love, love to connect with you. We have some super exciting news. Uh, We are beginning to select the interior contractors for renovations to begin. And before we um, talk a little bit about timeline, I wanna shout out Ron Youngblood, my man, who's been doing a lot of demo work on the inside to prep the facility for the walls to go up. He's been putting in a lot of time at the building and I truly thank God for him. But speaking of work, There are days that I am excited and proud to be a pastor. And one of those days was about a week ago at this past Saturday. We had our beautification day and you guys came out to support, help accomplish the task of getting all the drop ceiling cleared, leaves raked outside to help beautify our new campus. I tell you, that I was on a high all week, right? So many times that as a pastor, there's a lot on you. Your head's always on a swivel. You're doing a lot, right? It's like one of these moments was this past Saturday where everything just slowed down for me. And I was able to appreciate, you know, you guys showing up in full effect, helping, supporting, and making things happen. Y'all listen, I appreciate all of you. I was super proud and I've been on a high all week. So thank you guys for being amazing. I was super happy and blessed that we were able to do life together. Uh, And so I'm super excited, thankful for God, for each one of of you and how God is using you and calling you in this season. Well, this week, we're going to start talking about what it means to be an Advent season. What is what is the season of Advent? What does that mean? And so I wanted us to look at a particular text uh, in uh, in mind with Luke chapter one. But before we get into that, I will be right back with the message right after this. Are you ready? Let's rise. Okay, we're going to take a look at the topic of the blessing is on the way. And I want to draw our attention today to Luke chapter 1, verse 5 through 14. Luke chapter 1, verse 5 through 14. This is what it says. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. But they had no children. They had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, 
according to the custom of the priesthood. His lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole of the multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. Now, listen, normally I don't teach much on get your miracle, get your breakthrough. uh, But in order to experience what God has for you, you have to understand that there are seasons and eventually things have to turn in your favor. Eventually, the promises have to manifest. Eventually, you have to step into all that God has for you. And with that umbrella, with that context, I'm excited to share this message with you. God is getting ready to disrupt your normal plans, okay? If you're going to pause, take a note, have that mindset, right? I believe that in this season, God is going to stop heaven to send you the help that is needed. As we approach this Christmas season, we are in a period of Advent, okay? And Advent simply means the coming, the arrival of a notable noun, which is a person, place, or thing. Now, as we're in a season of Advent for the coming of the birth of Jesus, and yes, we know that this is not actually the time of Jesus' birth. We understand all that, but this is the time and season that we recognize that this season, this is a season of Advent, the time we celebrate the coming of Jesus. So overall, as a church, we are also in a season of Advent for the blessing that God has given us, our our facility, our campus, and I'm ready to go further as a church, deeper in our impact, deeper in our context content and more. And what strikes me as so unique is that this uh, year, all the timing of the messages have been hitting spot on with all the seasons that we've been in as a church. And I'm super excited about it. And I want us to look at this text for a few moments. And I want us to draw a, a couple different points away from this text today or away from this message. Let me give us a setup. There's a couple that is active in serving God. They were devoted to the things of God. They showed their belief in God by their obedience and diligence to do the things that please God. Now, for some of us modern day, that could look like many things to reflect on our devotion to God. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to think about your own devotion to God and where you find yourself right now in your relationship with him. Because although uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth were faithful to God, they had some unanswered prayers in their lives. Now, the first thing I notice about this text is the setup, okay? When we look at this text and we reread this passage, Luke disqualifies what you might think is the reason that they are having unanswered prayer right off the top. Luke tells us in chapter two that this couple was pleasing God, they were trying to do the right things, and they walked blameless before God, but Elizabeth could not have children. Hold up. Wow, let that sink in for a minute. Wait a minute. The thing you have been praying for uh, hasn't happened, but you are doing all the right things. Here's the point in this. Sometimes the unanswered prayer has nothing to do with what you are or are not doing. Uh Uh-oh, mic drop, right? I really want us to understand this, that God loves you. He is listening to you. He hears you and he cares for you. And sometimes him not responding to a prayer has nothing to do with how righteous you are or how you're living, right? In order for us to really receive the blessing, you're going to have to come to terms with this fact that the result of my prayers are not based on my performance, Okay, some of you right now are believing God to answer a prayer. And even right now, you're analyzing things like, oh, man, am I doing enough? Uh, Maybe God is mad at me about something. Maybe I'm not doing enough. Maybe it was because I sinned last night. Right. Uh, It has nothing sometimes to do with your performance. 
Okay. Uh, oh, if I'm just more righteous, then I'll get blessed. If I just work harder, then I'll get blessed. If I just do a little bit more, uh, I'll just get blessed. And I want to tell you right now that sometimes the blessing is not coming, not because you aren't righteous enough, right? Maybe just in sometimes in this, uh, you've got to come to terms with the fact that God knows what he's doing. God has a plan for my life and I have to yield to those plans. It has nothing to do with, oh man, maybe it's it's the way I treat it Somebody. Maybe it's uh, enough of what I've done. In this text, the Bible says that they walked uh, perfectly and blameless before God. They were people of righteousness. They were doing the right thing, but yet they did not receive an answer prayer. And I want that to encourage some of you right now in the middle of this season. Just because the blessing has not arrived yet does not mean that there's something that you've got to work on. We, we get into this works lifestyle, and I, I really appreciate Luke chapter 2 for sharing this, right? The reason why I don't have this blessing is because I didn't work hard enough. The reason why I don't have this blessing is because I didn't exercise enough faith. The reason why I didn't op- operate in this blessing is because God's mad at me, right? I want us to uh, kind of end those thoughts, dissolve those thoughts of our thought life today, because some of you right now are doing the best you can to walk blamelessly before God. And I want to tell you right now, those unanswered prayers, shake that off that, oh, okay, it's not because it's because I got to work harder. I got to do this more. No, no, no. God is a good father who loves you and cares for you. And he he hears your prayers. He sees what's going on. And so I want to tell you that sometimes the prayer has nothing to do with your performance. Okay. That's point number one. Now in this text, the blessing has not arrived just yet, but this is just the announcement. When the angel comes to Zacharias, that he makes an announcement. Now this is something I really want us to see about the blessing being on the way. Okay, this is just the announcement in this text that the blessing is on the way. There's no baby yet, right? Uh, Elizabeth at the time of this is still uh, not with child. And I want to tell you right now that you are in a season of maybe wondering, when is God going to turn things around for me? When is he going to shift things? When is he going to answer this prayer? And I want to give you an announcement this Sunday morning that God has heard your prayer and your blessing is on the way. I want you to hear me good. God has heard your prayer and your blessing is on the way. I don't know what you're believing God for, but I want you to to do uh, yourself a favor and I want you to receive this in your spirit because it may not look like it, but the blessing is in fact on the way. Take a look at this text. For Zechariah, the Bible says it was basically just a normal day. He was going into the temple because it was his turn to go in there and offer up incense. The lot fell on him. He was just doing the thing that he was supposed to do. It was just another normal day. But God who sees you and is watching over you decides that today is the day that I'm going to break up Zachariah's routine. I'm going to announce to him that the blessing is on the way. I wish that somebody in here right now in this virtual online space would get excited and knowing that you serve a God who will disrupt your normal routine and your normal plans to bless you. Even if it requires him moving heaven and earth to bless you. He will come on a day that you may not be even be operating in faith. It might just be a normal Sunday for you. It might just be a normal Tuesday. He may come on a day, watch this, where you keep messing up on. He might come on a day that you feel hopeless, not always on a day where you feel full of faith, full of hope, full of victory, full of optimism. He may even come on a day where you are questioning life and your reality. Are you hearing what I'm telling you today? I'm so glad we serve a God that does not need us to be perfect, to give us a blessing, to show up in our lives and to announce to us that a baby is on the way. You are pregnant with something. God is giving birth to something in this season. I believe that this week is a week that God disrupts your plans. And if you put uh, in the comments, I'm going to know you receive it, that God is going to disrupt my plans this week. He's going to announce that a blessing is on the way. I believe it. I declare it. I speak it over you today that this is going to be a week of victory. This is a week of an announcement that a baby is on the way. There is a announcement of a pregnancy. Okay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what you've 
believe in uh, what you've been believing God for. I really want you to stand in agreement in faith with this word that God is going to show up and announce in your life that this week is a week of blessing. Okay. Here's another point that I want to draw our attention to. And that's when the angel showed up. The angel showed up to make an announcement to Zacharias that um, a, a baby was on the way, but he did not show up and give them a baby. Watch this. He showed up to announce a pregnancy. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Uh Uh-oh, it's about to get good, right? He showed up not to give them a baby. He didn't come from heaven like a stork, right? Uh, I remember those stories uh, back in the day, the babies. Where did babies come from? The stork drops them off at your front porch, right? Uh, So he did not come like a stork to drop off a baby in the front porch. But what he did instead is he showed up not to give them a baby, but to announce a pregnancy, And in this season, God is not going to bring you the blessing on a platter, but instead he's announcing the blessing over you and saying that this blessing is on the way. I'm going to give you everything you need, watch this, to give birth. So God doesn't send the blessing on a silver platter, but what he does is he gives you the ability to give birth to the blessing that he spoke over you. Oh my goodness. I feel this thing, right? When God did this in rises season and us as a church, he did not give us a building. What instead he did is he gave us connections and we had to manifest and harvest and build relationships with those connections to help bring forward the blessing that God had for us. See, you're still going to have to work, right? You're still going to have to do something. But today the announcement is made over your life that the blessing is on the way on your life. It might be a relationship, an opportunity, a business partner. When God blesses you, you're still going to have to work. You're still going to have to push. You're still going to have to be in labor. You're still going to have to give an effort. But God today is announcing the blessing over your life. He is saying, I'm announcing that you're pregnant now. I'm not telling you that I'm giving you a baby. I'm telling you that what you've been believing me for, you are now pregnant with and the blessing of what you've been believing for, the prayers that you feel like he hasn't been answering, right? The the nights that you stayed up thinking and pondering, your frustrations were all under the eyes and ears of God. He saw you and he heard you and now is the time of your manifestation, but it's going to require you to put in some work, right? And we never receive the blessing oftentimes because we are too lazy to work to manifest the blessing over our lives. You know why? because we want God just to give us something and we don't want to have to put in any work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? To the contractors that that um, see the building, God just doesn't uh, bless just the work of their hands to produce it. He gives them the tools to manifest those things. You still got to put the, the, the studs together and you still got to fasten the drywall and pour in the insulation and run your wiring. God will give you the wherewithal to be able to do it. This is what I heard uh, uh, from another p- uh, pastor. And this is what he said. Oftentimes you you pray, uh, God, I need a new tool. I need a new table. I need a new house. And sometimes you, you get upset with when God doesn't give you the house, but he shows up with the wood. Just like it makes me think of Noah, right? Uh, when the flood was coming, God did not build Noah a boat. He told him how to build one. He showed him how to make it happen. He gave him the tools necessary to bring the blessing to pass. And I want to tell you that this week, God is going to give you the tools this week, whatever it is, if it's a connection, if it's a phone number, if it's a new relationship, God in that moment is not putting everything on a silver platter, ringing the doorbell and walking away. But in fact, what he's doing is he is lining up the blessing. So there might be a phone number this week. There there, there could be a business relationship this week, but whatever it is this week, whatever that blessing is, it's coming. It is on the way. I feel this thing so strongly in my spirit, not just for Rise Church, but for all of you. See, we had to work. We have to put in work. We have to put in work even at Rise, at the building, right, to make things happen. It does not happen by chance. It does not happen just because I want it to happen or I believe God to happen. It requires there to be some work 
dedication, uh, hours put in, some sweat equity we're yielding, all of these things. And I want to tell you today that as the blessing comes in, be on the lookout, not for uh, Mr. Right, not for Mrs. Right, not for the perfect scenario. Look for God and what he's speaking over you because he might be tugging. That's the blessing right there. And if we're looking in our natural eyes and our normal processes, we might miss it. Now, the last thing here that uh, I see from this text is that in the end, when the blessing comes, the angel says that there's going to be joy and gladness, joy that God has blessed you to be able to receive it. And I want to let you know today, I want to inspire you. I want to encourage you today. And I want to let you know that joy is coming gladness is coming. You're going to, God is going to restore your, your, your joy. God is going to restore, uh, how you've been feeling. He's, he's going to restore these things back unto you because I'm letting you know that the frustration you felt from the unanswered prayer is going to be erased by how God sends his blessing your way this way. Again, in this season of Advent, Advent means coming. This season is all about Jesus' coming. And it's always about our Christ, our Emmanuel. It's not us going to God. It's about God coming to us. And even with that same thought, it's the same thing that, that Zacharias and Elizabeth are getting ready to yield. John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus. Uh, right now, God is doing some things in our life. Uh, there's some things in your life that I want to pray for. <clears throat> I want to pray for what you've been praying for. I want to pray for and believe what you've been believing for, right? And so right now you might be a person that's like, Pastor A, this all sounds good, but will I really, really believe it? Is God going to do it? I'm letting you know this week, align your faith. Stand in faith, stand firm and know my blessing, what I've been praying for, what I've been talking to God for, what it looks like hasn't been shifting is on the way. I'm super excited for what God is doing, and I want to pray for us right now. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much in this Advent season that you sent Jesus to come in this and die for us, but you sent him as a, uh, as a Savior, but as a baby. You sent him to grow up in this season, to grow up in this process, to grow up with all of our mess, with all of our chaos, with all of our, our uh, confusion and lostness, God. And Lord, so as, as you've done that with the announcement of John the Baptist and, and with Jesus, Lord, we, we ask you to do that in our lives. Like, Lord, send us what we need this week. Send us the blessing this week. Allow us to pay more attention to what you're doing. God, you have permission to disrupt our plans. You have permission to change things around, turn things around for our good. And so, Father, we say yes to you today. We say yes, that this is a season that you're going to do something amazingly epic. And we align our faith with that, Lord. We're super excited. We thank you for all the things that you have done in our lives. We thank you for all the things that you are doing and the things that you are yet to do. Lord, we thank you because we know that the great things are still yet on the horizon, that the blessings are going uh, to come. And Lord, our, our latter, latter days, what's ahead of of us is greater than what is behind us. So we love you so much today, Lord, in Jesus name. Amen. Now, listen, you might be a person that's looking for a church and says, I heard there was a church coming on Van Born. Listen, well, you have found us and Rise Church is excited, right? So I want you to join and be a part of what's happening here. So feel free. Go ahead, uh, send us an email that says connect at the risechurch.com. Also, listen, you might be stumbling across this, this video, this message, not really knowing anything about Rise Church or anything about Jesus at all. And I want to give you an opportunity to enter introduce you to him, right? You have an opportunity. It's so so cool that we have the opportunity to connect with the creator of the universe, the Lord of glory, right? God, a great father. He sent us his only son named Jesus to die for us. And all we have to do is believe, right? We have to believe that he is the son of God and we have to believe him enough to make him the captain of our lives. That means living out life the way he uh, tells us to, right? And if that's you for a moment, I want you to go ahead and send us an email. You've made a great decision to make Jesus the captain of your life, right? And so I'm super excited, but get in touch with us as well. Connect at therisechurch.com. 
Listen, there's a couple of announcements I want to give to you real quick. Save the date, okay? Our first save the date, January 6th and January 13th. We're finalizing our interest meetup for one of those days. So if you know somebody, right, that is also interested in joining Rise, right, um, or you have a friend or a contact or somebody you wanted to invite to volunteer, or you yourself are interested in being part of it, save those dates to tell others about it. We will have the exact day and time of the meetup by next week. Okay. So next Sunday's online experience, I will have those details for you, but I want to start putting that bug in your ear. And I would absolutely love if you reached out before then with any questions or inquiries. So you can send us an email again at connect at the rise church.com. It's our time for giving, right? The ways that you can give are on the screen. We as a church believe in the first fruit, giving, giving our time, God our time, the first fruits of our time, our talent, and our treasure. And we believe that as we honor God with these things, that God, in fact, honors us. So I want to encourage you today, as you give, the ways that you can give being on the screen, that you can give God your time, right? Your, your giftings, your talents, right? That's what those are. And then your treasure, your finances, honoring God. A lot can be said with how you honor God with your finances, right? And and so uh, I am just believing that God is going to honor his word as you give, that he is going to give back unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So as we give God our first fruits, we don't give God our first fruits to just be blessed, but we give God our first fruits because we are blessed. And so I thank you, thank you, thank you for honoring God with the first fruits of all of your increase. Again, the ways that you can give are on your screen. And I thank you so much for honoring God in this way here at Rise Church, we have been able to accomplish so much by honoring by everybody honoring God and giving God of their first fruits. And I know even the best is yet to come. Well, listen, I will be keeping us updated. If you would like to stay updated on the happenings of Rise Church, go ahead, send an email, admin at therisechurch.com. I would love to get you connected, have a one-on-one or something of that nature to bring you up to speed with where we are in our process here at Rise Church and then what we're looking forward to in the future. So I'm super excited for what God is doing. You will see us post updates and all of those things even next week as we get ready to uh, shift into uh, uh, coming back to Together in person at 10 a.m. on Sunday. So be on the lookout. Uh, check out your group meet. Be on the lookout for your emails. Check out for your push notifications coming through on your text message. I will do my God's honest best to keep you updated and posted, but I'm looking forward to our future. It's going to be absolutely epic. We have some great leaders that are taking on some reins and leading different ministries, and I'm super excited to see them operate in their God-given giftings, and I'm super excited to see you operating in your God-giving gifting as well. Listen, greatness is on the horizon. It's our time to rise, and I can't wait to see all the exciting things that God is going to do through you. I'm going to pray one last time, and I'll see you next week. God, we thank you so much for this virtual experience. We thank you so much that we could still gather together, even in an online or virtual space. God, I pray, and I thank you that the blessing is on the way. I thank you for the announcement that you've given. Hey, uh, you are pregnant. There is a baby on the way, and so whatever that looks like for us, us in this season, in this process for us, Lord, we decree and declare that blessings are coming this week, that favor and goodness are chasing us down this week, and that we are going to see the blessing of operating in, in, in faith, standing in faith, using our giftings, but also knowing that you hear us, knowing that you answer us, and knowing that you have a plan for our life. So we thank you for the connections that are happening this week. We thank you for the doors that are opening this week. We thank you for the opportunities being given to us this week. We love you so much. We bless your name and we uh, we just trust that you are going before us, that you are standing behind us and you are uh, encamping your angels all around us uh, like a shield. We love you so much. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Well, listen, God bless you guys. Feel free to reach out, connect with us. I look forward to seeing you guys next Sunday. Have an awesome, awesome week. We're going to go further a little bit in this Advent season. We'll see you. God bless you. I love you. Bye now.